Do you ever point the car in a certain direction and just go? Go out exploring, looking for treasures? I had a great day out with my friend Dude, and there was yarn involved. Yarn that revealed itself in the strangest of places. So come along, grab a drink, grab a project, and you can listen in on the adventures of my day. Hi everyone, and welcome to My Pink Bat Tub Knits. My name is Diane. If you are new or if you are returning, everyone is welcome here. Who is Dude? Well, Dude is one of my bestest friends. We met in library school, gosh, like almost 20 years. We call each other Dude. I don't know where that came from. I even cross-stitched her, her name, Dude, and she proudly displayed it on her desk just to confuse people. So we often go out on little adventures. Now, Dude is crafty like me, but in different ways. She is an amazing sewer. She made me this pillow, birds on a wire. And she is a really talented photographer. Some of her work that I have hanging in my house, we have a uh, lunch or laundry, which is a uh, street photo she took in Chicago. We also have her self-portrait, which is hanging up in one of my bathrooms. And uh, she's got a great photo of a chicken that she took that I have in my kitchen. We decided to go to Steinbach. Steinbach is just shy of an hour from Winnipeg, and it's the third largest city in Manitoba. Our first stop was in the town of Lorette, and I have to confess, I have never been to the thrift store in my small town. And I'm definitely going to go back because you never know what you're going to find at a thrift store. Good morning. It is 1019. Hi, dude. Hi. So where are we going today? Uh, around. We're going around. I don't know. Hubs gave us some directions and we're clearly getting lost. We already forgot them. We're going to go to thrift stores and maybe some... Uh, so we're going to look for craft stuff, well, anything really. Southern Manitoba, Steinbach area, and then we'll see where else we're going. Because we have no plans. We're just going. Southeastern Manitoba. Let's go. Let's go. Don't they know that Christmas in July is over? Who doesn't want this? Oh my Look at that guy. I got this cat. Beauty. For a dollar. A dollar. He'll sit in amongst my potted plants. Very cute. Are you gonna name him? I'm not sure dollar. Got a nice little pot. You never know when you want a nice little pot. 50 cents. Yeah, she tried charging you a buck. I, I corrected her on that. She caught her. I got a couple of The books were amazing. 50 amazing. cents, brand new. 50 cents. We are librarians, so yep. is this for you or for the, your library? For me. Okay. And then another one for me that I had years ago and was missing it the other day. And sure enough, 50 cents. And one for the library. Yep, 25 and cents. 25 cents. And look at this beautiful I love that. wire basket that you hang up and you can just put. Yeah, $2, right? $2. Is it $2? Oh, I should have got that. In basket. What are you going to put in that? I'm not even sure. You could put your fabric in your sewing room. I could put stuff in there. I could put it out in the garden shed and put things in there. I could. It's have too it. nice for the garden shed. Okay, so how much in total? Five fifty. Good job. But I spent a whopping five dollars. But let's start with this little gem. This is a little chicken stool that I thought would be great to use for my uh, markets. Now I sell my knitting at markets just in the fall and I have a display and I think it's always really important to have different heights 
when you have uh, when you display your goods just for a variety so this I think is going to look really good if I put one of my little sitting chickens on it a dollar buttons are always a good find this was 50 cents I'm gonna open it up because the reason why I bought this was actually for one sort of button in particular it looks like there's at least 20 of them and you can't beat the price of 50 cents. Look at me buying stuff with an actual purpose in mind. I wanna call that personal growth. <laughs> now, I'm always looking for buttons for um, my, my animal mittens. This is what they look like. They have the brown, they have a brown uh, edge around this black button. And I thought it would be really good if I did any sort of dark mittens that you could actually see the button like an eye. I have recently been getting back into cross stitch. I used to cross stitch years ago, like I'm talking the 90s. And I have a bunch, a bunch of cross stitch uh, fabric and thread and older patterns. And they had a whole bunch of pamphlets that were 25 cents. If you've recently watched me, I just did Christmas in July. And I found this Christmas um, little ornaments cross stitch booklet. I particularly like this Santa. He's a very nice vintage Santa. And I also really like this Santa in a sleigh. I'm going to get my cross stitch that I'm working on now and show you what it is. I'm making this fox cross stitch for my future fox wall. I have a fox watercolor print up there. We have foxes on our property and it's always a real joy to see them every uh, year. Haven't been able to get any good footage this year, but I do have some photos from previous years. I'll just pop something in here that I've taken. And this is my, sorry for the sun, got the sun beaming through. This is my um, fox cross stitch that I'm going to finish. I just have to do the, I think there's eight or nine rust colors. Oh, that's a little better. And so I haven't worked on it recently. I'm gonna definitely pick it up more in the winter after I just have a couple months left to get my market knitting done. And then I'm gonna get back into this cross stitch and I wanna make stuff for myself. And there is not enough time in the day, my friends. It's a cow one. And I really liked this picture of the cow, but look at this. Sorry, the sun's not the best today. Look at this one. Uh, this is like the American Gothic version of the cows. And dude had a good chuckle. And I'm going to make that for dude because why not? But then when we got back into the car, she had this story to share. So dude, if I made that American Gothic cow cross stitch for you, would you actually hang it in your house? Really? Yeah, it is. The artist of the American Gothic, I think his name is Grant Woods, he is from Iowa. Okay. And the house at the back of the, the behind the, those people in the painting actually stands to this day in Iowa and is the inspiration for the painting. And you can go there if you're ever in Iowa, like Cape Town, Iowa. You can go there and there's a little museum and you can, they have all those clothes in there and you can dress up in the old American Gothic it is sorry so I definitely have to make it for her now that I know that it's her favorite painting and she had you know gone and saw the house and everything the final thing I bought and um, took a chance took a chance on this but I already have a plan for this and again are you proud of me for actually having a plan when I buy yarn because I'm norm normally not that person. I found this really interesting and it is Noro. Now I'm assuming they both are. They feel like the same thing. I had never seen this. This is like a, a boucle kind of Noro which I'm not normally into. I did go up to the counter and asked if I could open it because I wanted to smell it and I wanted to touch it and give it a better look. It smells perfectly fine. It's not musty or smoky or anything. I looked through it. It is, 
it is fine is completely fine i've never seen this i did some research uh niji is the the type of noro it is discontinued and it is a very um fine halo-y i apologize for the lights friends fine halo-y situation but I am seeing teddy bears completely with this. In fact, I already pulled some yarn. I'm going to put these two together to make a really nice, this is just a Vanna's Choice acrylic yarn. But to put it with this, I'm going to make a bougie bear with this. And then this one, which has variations of different colors in it, but very neutral. This one is color 88 because that's what the label says. I'm going to put with this and I think they're both going to be two great bears. So I'm definitely going to do them in the next month or two. So this, the specs on this is it's 45% wool, 25% kid mohair, 25% silk, 5% nylon, 88 meters for one. I did find this color on Ravelry and this is indeed the color of this. This might be something a little different, but the, the thread definitely looks the same. Um, yeah, so this is $3. So in total, Thrifty Treasures, I spent $5. We then decided let's get ourselves a cup of coffee for the road. And when we drove into town, we noticed there was a Perk Mobile coffee truck set up in an empty parking lot. Now, it's a small town. There's no fancy gourmet coffee place, but this truck drives around and parks in various small towns in my area and they make really good coffee so I treated dude to a cup. I got a latte. Okay and I got a London fog. Don't it's fog. really hot. It's really and a whole bunch of napkins because I'll probably spill. Okay, where next to do we go to the center of Canada or yeah. on the way home? Center of Canada. Let's go to the center of Canada. Yes. We decided to take a side highway to get to the center of Canada, which was not very far from Lorette. Now, I've driven by it a hundred times. Have I ever stopped there? No. Saw something on the side of the road that had to make us pull over and take a closer look. I have a bit of an irrational fear for bees. Maybe not so much bees, because I feel like if you don't bother a bee, they won't bother you. But there was a lot of them, and it was a little overwhelming. <laughs> but wasps. Wasps scare the heck out of me. Um, they're up to no good. They're up to no good. So we made it to the center of Canada. There was quite a few tourists there, actually. And what a cool place. the car dude I stole the rock uh -oh. most small towns have monuments or some sort of world's largest blank
stole the rock. Crime number one. I drove out an entrance only and committed an illegal right turn. Crime number two. First place was this really super cool vintage store with a whole bunch of treasures. It is called Retro Chic, and it is owned by two sisters. They've had this business for around 12 years in Steinbeck. They were just really cool ladies. They have an Instagram page, and they have an Etsy store, so I'm going to link it below. They say they don't put a lot on Etsy. And as luck would have it, they are only open part-time in the summer on Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. So we were in luck because we didn't check the hours. We just assumed they would be open being city-ish folk. Uh, sure enough, they were open and boy, did we explore in there and we found some stuff. I made one purchase. It was $15. I actually um, was given a glass chicken from my mother-in-law. Uh, she gifted it to me before she passed away, and everybody in the family really knew I wanted it. So uh, I'll show you a picture of it here. My beautiful find from the vintage store, and what a cool place. I want to go back and take Hubs there. Like, he would just love it. There was so much to see. It was a little overwhelming, um, and my footage just captures the small amount, but it is a must-stop if you're ever in that area. The ladies were fantastic. They really were. And boy, what a bunch of beautiful mementos in that store. So Dude ends up getting a wall clock for her sewing room that she's always wanted, like those old style clocks. And as she was paying, the ladies uh, said to us, oh, we've got this one box of stuff that we're just taking over to the thrift store because it's not really uh, in keeping with the theme of our store. Like it's not really vintage. So dude picked this hear no evil, see no evil, say no evil monkey set uh, of wood. And I mean, it was free. So she took that home with her. She got home. She texted me. She goes, I'm not really feeling the monkey. So she may pass it on to uh, someone else. But I said, give it a good oil. Maybe it'll come back to life a little bit more. But it's very rustic looking carving. And she bought herself her clock, which I believe was $25. So she was very, very thrilled with this purchase. Directly across the street was this Cana great Canadian dollar store. Now dollar stores can be really hit or miss, but we do not have great Canadian dollar stores uh, in the city of Winnipeg. I've never, ever been to one. I've never heard of them. And uh, later when I got home last night, I looked them up and they are only in a few rural areas rural stores close to me. Maybe it's more popular in other parts of Canada. I don't know if any of you have ever heard of them, but I thought, you know, I'll go in and take a look because you never know what you can find at a dollar store. They had a yarn aisle and I was very, very surprised to find this at the dollar store. You know how I said Briggs and Little was a staple of yarn across Canada? Well, apparently you can buy it at this dollar store heritage for six dollars this was kind of the rough stuff you said, yeah right? it's like so bizarre that this is in a dollar store but I really like this and they only have one so I think if it's six dollars I'm gonna buy it because I have a yarn addiction I was just talking about Briggs and Little yarn 
in my last episode and how it is can be found a lot of places across Canada. I failed to mention that it is much more of a budget yarn. And usually I have seen um, Briggs and Little, I'm going to say for $8 Canadian in most places. But at the dollar store, it was $6. Most of it was heritage, but I found this one hank of Tuffy which I don't have any Tuffy, and I love this color. This, to me, screams sock monkey. So, I mean, I could make a sock monkey hat out of this, or I could make um, an actual sock monkey if I have enough of it, which I think I do. Again, this is wool from the Woolen Mill in New Brunswick. It is a two-ply, 80% pure wool, 20% nylon, 113 grams and it is 215 yards so I think it's like an Aran weight but I love a marled yarn if there was only one I mean it was six dollars I was not going out yesterday looking for yarn but yarn seems to find me and I'm just I cannot wrap my head around the fact that this kind of stuff was at a dollar store. Because Hubs knew we were going to the Steinbach area. He asked me if I could pop into one of his haunts, which is a record store, and uh, look and see if they had any Leonard Skinner albums because he's wanting to beef up his collection. So... Uh, dude was the model and we took a whole bunch of photos of what was in stock and sent it to him. But then he shared with me that he only wanted used albums and these were brand new albums. So he said, don't worry about it. So while we were there, we saw a fabric store within that mall area right beside it. So we popped in. We didn't buy anything. Uh, just took a quick look. Now, dude is a sewer. And I said, well, is there anything you're interested in in here, dude? And she said, no, I don't have a certain project that I need fabric. How are we friends? I am a hoarder of craft supplies and she is very, well, I'm going to say smart to just buy things when she needs them and doesn't uh, accumulate stuff the way I do. I guess opposites attract. Our main reason for going to the Steinbach area was to check out their thrift store because we hadn't been there before. I have to tell you that Dude finds the strangest things at thrift stores that she likes to uh, incorporate into her house. Again, she did not disappoint in her selection at this thrift store. Now, this one is the Steinbach MCC thrift store. It was literally a city block long. It was giant. Most disappointing store, but a really good find. Who's that you got? Who's that handsome guy? He's kind of um, giving me a little bit of glare. That would give you glare. But beautifully done. Yeah. And I bet his eyes follow you when you cross the room. Oh, creepy. It's like a Mona Lisa. But very nice. You're going to clean that up yep. for the dining room? Yep, that's a true vintage find. There used to be a Blue Boy ice cream we had here in Manitoba. I don't know if that was a Canada-wide thing or not. I'm thinking about ice cream. Anyways, I only found two things. And again, Christmas in July seems to be haunting me wherever I go. It was at the first thrift store and uh, I found something at this one. This is a Better Homes and Garden magazine. Now this was from 2022, which is not that old. I love looking at different gifty ideas. To me, it's kind of like craft porn it just gives you a lot of inspiration and there is a few things in here that I really really liked there's everything from sewing to I would love to try and make that some templates to make some of these items like it's a complete book there was even um some crochet in here felt macrame 
you name it, it's in here. So I, I, I just enjoy looking through these kind of books. I have some older ones that I've held on to. They always give me inspiration. So this was 50 cents. The other thing I bought, which ended up um, is going to work out really well, and it's probably going to be for Dude's Cross Stitch. Oh, this is 14 counts, so I might use a different one. It was just some cross stitch fabric. It was a dollar. Brand new in the package. You can never have enough of that. A dollar, so I spent a dollar fifty there. I don't know. I just I just like deals. I really like deals, but I like um, finding purposeful things at the at the uh, thrift stores. You never know what you're gonna find. I don't go to thrift stores very often. I usually just go with dude. I always see people uh, find like hand dyed yarn at the thrift store and I've never really been up to looking that hard <laughs> for that stuff. I am very pleased with everything I bought yesterday. We had to make our way home. We decided what are we, where are we gonna go next? Cause we were a little, little ways from home, nothing too far, not even half an hour. So we pulled out the old school map and took a look. To the okay, so we're here, right? How are we this close to Sandylands? Sandylands is like by Brandon, ain't it? It's a Sandylands Provincial Forest. Hmm, what the heck? Like we're almost in Ontario. Look. No. Okay, so anyway, we're at La Brocrie, so if we'll take this Highway 52, over to this highway and go north and that'll take us to New Bothwell right there. I guess the question is do we want cheese? Of course we want cheese. Let's go get some cheese. Apparently there was a really large cow in the near area, a monument, and we thought well you sat in a big chair You've checked out a large automobile. Let's look for this cow. Then it was really cooking outside. I mean, it was hot. And I was really disappointed that the cow was really high up because we couldn't, like, sit on it. Then we were off to get cheese because who wouldn't want cheese on a hot day? And New Bothwell is known for their cheese. They have a cheese factory in that area. I had never been there. And uh, wouldn't you know it, we saw another cow. So this definitely is the cow episode when it comes to... Um, cross-stitching a cow, various cows, cheese, it just kind of has evolved to that. bit of a different episode but uh you know dude and I do like to go on little adventures from time to time and I thought I would just share one of ours with you today oh there's that bird again what sort of summer adventures do you like to do with your bestie do you ever go on little adventures like what we do we always I love the fact that we don't really plan things and things always seem to reveal themselves to us we always have a good time, even when it's 32 degrees out. We always have fun. Thanks so much for joining me today. Uh, until next time, my friends, be well and bye for now.
find a home for this guy. Oh, just weed central in here. 